Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alex Cuesta Daily Show. Thank you all for joining me so much. I always appreciate it that you're taking the time out of your busy day to give this a listen. It is January 19th of 2022. That is a Wednesday. And I'm here for a fun show. Now, before we get going, I tend to forget to do this, but I'm going to do this today. Please share, follow, like, as well as you're listening here, spread it word of mouth and give this show five stars so it can continue to grow and spread and reach to a wider audience. Um, with that, let's get going on the show because the moral of the story today is going to be hiding and appeasement are never a good thing to do. So the background of this story that we're going to be talking about from CNN is Joe Biden, President Biden, had a press conference today and did a speech. Now, it's a a pretty big speech. It had some pretty big things happen in the speech. And you would think that in the history of our presidents, you know, in the modern era where TV and even, um, you know, on the radio and things, they would tend to do their speeches when they could reach the most people, when the most people can hear them. So, Around dinner time, I would say like past six o'clock, maybe closer lately, 830, nine o'clock ish. We've seen a lot of them today. Guess what time our fearless leader, the leader of the free, free world, decided to do his press conference at the ripe old time of four o'clock when most of the country is probably driving home from work or haven't even gotten off yet. I don't know if it's intentional. It sure seems like it is. I don't know if he has an extremely early bedtime. I could not tell you. Well, I could tell you why it's four o'clock because they don't want anyone to hear what this guy really has to say. They want him to say it and then they want the media to spin it. They want the media to get the snippets. They want the media to say, oh, well, he sounded pretty good because one of the things that has been Joe Biden's major criticism is that he's a gaffe machine. He can't get through a speech without losing his place, without looking old, without saying something off the prompter that's completely ridiculous and newsworthy because it's so freaking dumb. So no, they did it at four o'clock because they knew majority of America and the world would not be paying attention at that time. It wouldn't be. So because you got to think it's four o'clock here, Eastern, where I am in New York, that is one o'clock over in California. Do you think people give a shit at one o'clock what the president is saying? Most of the country doesn't care what he's saying anymore. His approval numbers are floating around the mid 30s now, low 40s, mid 30s, according to most polls. So it's not good. So they put it at four o'clock so that he would be hidden and so that the media can spin his words. And I can look at Twitter threads where they're saying, oh, you know, he looked good and he didn't have one big gaffe. So, you know, to us, that was a good job. So making it through speeches at hour long speeches and not having a gigantic gaffe is the standard now for presidents not to deliver a good speech not to deliver good policy, not to steer the country in the right direction. No, to get through the speech without any major hiccups so we can see that his mental capacities are strong. That shouldn't be the standard for the leader of the free world. It's not the standard for presidents of companies. It's not the standard for teachers sitting in front of a classroom. Why is it the standard for the uh, leader of the free world? But I digress. This article from CNN specifically in CNN politics, is going to cover something that he said that not even the left can cover up for because it is egregious and it is terrible and it is showing and telling the strength and the tenor of this uh, president's regime. So let's get into it. The title of the article is Biden predicts Russia will move in to Ukraine, but says minor incursion may prompt discussion over consequences. And this is by Kevin Liptak, CNN. So just right there in the headline, you can't cover up this quote. He's saying Russia is going to invade Ukraine. But if it's a minor incursion, a.k.a. if it's not anything heavy, 
if it's a proxy going in, not the actual Russian government, one of their proxies creating problems, or you know, if they're just dipping their toe in or something like that, if it's nothing, if it's nothing serious, if they're not going in there with boots going crazy. And, you know, if there's, you know, no one dead, then no, they can go in all they want. Let's read the article. President Joe Biden on Wednesday predicted Russia will move in to Ukraine, citing existential concerns by the country's president, Vladimir Putin, even as he acknowledged this disunity with NATO over how to respond to minor incursion. We'll get more onto NATO later. I have a lot to say on what he says about NATO. The candid assessment laid bare the struggle Biden faces in creating meaningful consequences and deterrence for Moscow, which remains closely intertwined economically with the United States' top European partners. Now we're going to pause there. The deterrent is, we'll fuck you up. Don't do it. We will go at you. And unfortunately, love it or hate Trump, he was the crazy man that people thought would actually do it. And the world leaders thought he'd actually do it. That's the thing. He had the leaders thinking, if Trump says he's going to try to kill us, he's going to try to kill us. If Trump says, you cross this line, I'm going to throw every fucking bomb in the arsenal at you. He's going to do it. No one thinks Biden is scary. No one gives a shit about Biden. And now let's also talk about that last part, that Moscow is closely intertwined economically with the United States top European partners. That has to do with oil and a lot of other things. And guess who allowed that to happen? It was the United States because we're not, we're, there's an agreement within NATO and there's plenty of unilateral agreements amongst our European partners that they, the, there are certain business deals with Russia that can't be done unless it's approved by a group of these countries. So that means that the United States had to capitulate to some of these things. So just think, they're intertwined because America partially allowed it. Let's continue with the article. The remark elicited near immediate outcry from Kiev, where officials, and by the way, it's Kiev, it's not Kiev. I don't know where the hell that pronunciation of Kiev came from. It's been Kiev my whole life. It will remain Kiev. Sorry, let's continue. Um, the remark elicited near immediate outcry in Kiev, where officials have been meeting with Biden's top diplomat as Russian troops amass on the country's border. High level attempts to clean up the comment, um, to clean up the comments soon followed at the White House. While Biden vowed withering economic consequences on Russia, should Putin send his troops over the frontier, including restricting its financial trans uh, transitions in U.S. dollars, he suggested Western nations were not in sync on what to do should a lesser violation occur. Here's one of Biden's quotes. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and we end up having a fight about what to do or not to do, Biden told reporters at an East Room news conference. But if they actually do what they're capable of doing with the forces amassed on the border, it's going to be a disaster for Russia if they further invade Ukraine. There you go. There you go. Number one, the Western nations are not in sync. Yeah, because you're not a leader. That is why, because Joe Biden is not a leader and nobody respects him. Nobody cares what Joe Biden has to say. He doesn't lead. We thought Obama was weak. Obama was a weak president. Joe Biden's a weak and feeble human. That's a different right now. Joe Biden's a weak man, let alone a weak president. At least Barack Obama was physically fit. He was just a weak president that you know tried to make, push America standing lower and lower. He believed in equity. President Biden is just a weak individual at this point in his life. He was never mentally strong. He was always a dumbass, but now he's deteriorating. So nobody cares. A strong leader would sit there and put the Western powers in line. We usually lead these types of things. The United States usually leads these types of things. Everyone usually takes notes from us. So, this says a lot about President Biden when he's the one saying there's no unity there. It says a lot about him as a leader, not only of the United States, but of our allied partnerships with our closest members in Europe. And a weak United States makes a weak Europe. Let's continue. Later, asked to clarify what he meant by minor incursion, Biden said he drew the line at Russian forces crossing the border, killing Ukrainian fighters. So Russian forces can cross the border, but if they don't kill any Ukrainian fighters, then it's no big deal. This, my friends, is called 
appeasement. You, Ukraine knows they have no backing now. They know there's no reason to fight because there is no one coming to help them. Russia is not scared of the United Kingdom. Russia is not scared of France. Germany will not attack Russia. They have the pipeline deal. Germany will not defend Ukraine. Canada's not going all the way over there. Australia is too busy jailing its own people over COVID. This is not going to this. This speech essentially just told Vladimir Putin, you can take parts of Ukraine as you want. As you'd like. Similar to Crimea. If there's no death, let it happen. And let me tell you, this has happened before in history. And what we got was World War II. Appeasement doesn't work. That is going to be the theme here. Let's continue. Quote, I think that changes everything, the president said, but it depends on what he does. To what extent we'll get total unity on the NATO front. It's very important that we keep everyone in NATO on the same page. That's why I'm, that's what I'm spending a lot of time doing. And there are differences, he went on. There are differences in NATO as to what countries are willing to, depending, they're willing to do depending on what happens. He's a weak man. President Biden's weak. NATO is the United States. We lead that group. If he is not, the issue is he's not a leader. He's not strong. Nobody depends on him. And they know he's not going to go to war with Russia. They know he's not going to do much. This is the guy that quite literally appeased Russia on day one by giving them a pipeline, making them into an energy giant. Bigger than they already were. No one in Europe believes in Joe Biden as a leader. No one in Europe, no one in NATO thinks that the United States is dependable right now. Think about that. The bullshit that we heard during the campaign that he's going to make America respectable around the world again. No, he made us look like a bunch of pussies again. Continue with the article. The candid assessment of NATO's divisions, which have been well documented, even as U.S. and Western officials seek to protect unity amid the crisis, left Ukrainian officials aghast. One told CNN's Matthew Chance that he was shocked at the president that the U.S. President Biden would distinguish between incursion and invasion and suggest that a minor incursion would not trigger sanctions. Quote, this gives the green light to Putin to enter Ukraine at his pleasure, the official added, claiming he'd never heard any nuance like this from a U.S. administration before. Kiev is stunned, he said, referring to the Ukrainian government. Yes, presidents are not supposed to speak like this. They're not supposed to be wishy-washy. They're supposed to make strong, bold statements. They're supposed to say, you cross this line, there will be consequences. Not if you cross this line in some type of way, in in a certain way, there's consequences. All this speech indicates is we are not willing to push back against Russia as they attempt to recreate the Soviet Union. This is what is happening. They are attempting to recreate the Soviet Union in the same way that Adolf Hitler was attempting to reclaim parts of Germany that used to be theirs with the Rhine and the Sudetenland and all these places that he said were, you know, they're mostly German speaking people there anyway. There are as anyway, France, give them back. And what happened? They gave them back. They gave them back. Now it took. Germany going into a sovereign nation like Poland to set the other European countries off. But Ukraine is in a similar position where Ukraine was a member of the Soviet Union. They're basically Russian. Just give us Russia back. It's all Putin wants. Just appease me. I promise we'll stop when we recreate the Soviet Union. I promise. Continue with the article. The White House sought to explain Biden's remarks by pointing out a Russian attack in cyberspace or through power military forces would prompt a reciprocal response compared to a scenario where Russian troops move from their positions into Ukraine. So we're going to go as hard as they go. So instead of actually deterring them, we're just going to kind of try and fight them at their level. That's not a deterrent. And he doesn't fear that. He does not fear that. Because we're not going to actually respond to power military forces. We're going to leave Ukraine to do it. We're not going to do shit there. And with the cyberspace stuff, we can't defend ourselves. Russia's not not scared of us in cyberspace. They're kicking our ass there. We've seen it. We've seen it. 
And if we do have great cyber uh, warriors, where the hell are they? I don't hear about disruptions anywhere else. Let's continue. Quote, President Biden has been clear with the Russian president. If any Russian military forces move across the Ukrainian border, that's a renewed invasion, and it will be met with swift, severe, and united response from the United States and our allies. Press Secretary Jen Psaki wrote in a statement following Biden's marathon news conference. Look at that bullshit. Look at there that right there. Biden's marathon news conference. That is not a marathon. Hour and a half is not a marathon for a politician and a president. They are making it look like this man is a superhuman person, a president. It is not a marathon. It's his second press conference of his presidency that he's held with open questions. They are scared to let the man speak. I hate that CNN does this nonsense. This is not journalism. This is not. That is an opinion. That it's a marathon news conference. That is not true. But also Jen Psaki is a liar. That, what she said there is not at all what the president said. Let's continue. Quote, President Biden also knows from long experience that the Russians have an extensive playbook of aggression short of military action, including cyber attacks and paramilitary attacks, Saki went on. And he affirmed today that those acts of Russian aggression will be met with a decisive, reciprocal and united response. No, he didn't. He said there's dissension in NATO about how we're going to go about this and we'll decide what we're going to do depending on what Russia does, not that we have a front and we know what we want to do. A senior administration official said if Russian military forces tried to take Ukrainian territory by force and violated Ukrainian sovereignty, whether that was a small portion or a large portion of land, that would constitute an invasion by the Biden administration standards and would warrant severe penalties. They need to correct everything about what this guy said. And this is exactly what I'm talking about earlier. They hold the press conference at four and give them time to sit there and check it and check it and fluff it and fluff it and correct it and correct it. So by the time you read this article at CNN, you don't even know what Biden's true words were. You get quotes, but then you get all these cleanups. So then you have people arguing with you going, no, 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 no. Biden never said a difference between incursion and invasion. Clearly, his administration said that it's an invasion, but it's not what the president said in his remarks. And you know a lot of these remarks were prepared because they bludgeon these people with questions. And they know exactly what the questions are going to be coming for the most part. Let's continue with the article. And while the official acknowledged that the U.S. and NATO members likely will not have the same list of targets and details matching on every measure. The response will remain highly unified and provide a force multiplier to actions we take. That is the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Highly unified? No, they need a leader to unify them. This is what we are going to do. If you have a bunch of countries in NATO doing things on a scale of very strict to kind of strict, it's not going to have the same effect. And I'll tell you right now, sanctions aren't going to have any effect. They don't care about sanctions. We're, we made them, in, we've helped make them into energy giants. They basically are one, of, they are one of the major importers of goods into Europe right now. They are not worried about some sanctions. Not at all. They're prepared for them. They wouldn't make this move if they weren't prepared for them. Continuing. Biden's remarks came as the U.S. entered what officials have deemed a dangerous period when a Russian invasion could occur at any moment. The president, while acknowledging lingering uncertainty over Putin's intentions, said Wednesday he believed the Russian leader would soon invade Ukraine. Quote, I'm not so sure he's a, he is certain what he's going to do. My guess is he'll move in. He has to do something, Biden said, describing a leader searching for relevance in a post-Soviet world. He's trying to find his place in a world between China and the West. Biden's prediction of invasion was the firmest acknowledgement to date the United States fully expects Putin to make a move after amassing 100,000 troops along the Ukrainian border. Oh, gee, golly, shucks. Finally, only took 100,000 troops going onto the border. What happened last time he built up on a border? Hmm. Crimea was not that long ago. These people are dense. Let's continue. After speaking with Putin twice last month, Biden said he believed his Russian counterpart had a good understanding of the economic sanctions he was preparing to enact. Quote, he's never seen sanctions like the ones I promised will be imposed if he moves. Number one, he said, adding the level of punishment would depend on what Russia's invasion looks like. That includes limiting Russia's transactions in U.S. financial institutions 
anything that involves dollar denominations, Biden said. The president warned Russian lives would be lost in an invasion along with potential Ukrainian casualties. The cost of going into Ukraine in terms of physical loss of life of Russians, they'll be able to prevail over time, but it's likely go, but it's going to be heavy, he said. It's going to be real. It's going to be consequential. Putin has a stark choice, either de-escalation or diplomacy, confrontation and consequences. This is not all just a cakewalk for Russia, he went on. Militarily, they have overwhelming superiority. And as it relates to Ukraine, they'll pay a stiff price immediately, near term, medium term and long term if they do it. It's, it's mind boggling what this man says. Like, I, honestly, these are real quotes. These are real quotes. This guy, he's he's inarticulate. Joe Biden is inarticulate. And let's talk about sanctions. Guys, sanctions are strongly worded letters in the diplomatic community. That's all they are. They're strongly worded letters. How many times have they thrown sanctions on so many of these countries? And what do they do? Okay, we'll back down. Then they throw money at them. But what did we do with Russia when they did Crimea? We leveled off after they took it. They took the Crimean Peninsula. And now I'm guaranteed they're going to take chunks of Ukraine because I've already seen the map. Highly Russian speaking parts of Ukraine, non-Russian speaking, blah, blah, blah. They're going to, quote unquote, just take the parts that speak Russian because they want to be Russian anyway. Telling you that's going to happen. And it's verbatim, verbatim Hitler and Germany. You'll see. You'll see it's coming on. And in talking about the military force, God knows what is he saying? What is he saying? The cost of uh, is the cost of going into Ukraine in terms of physical loss, life for the Russians, the Russian military. He said they're overwhelming. I don't think there's going to be major. Russia's not worried about major loss. And a person like Vladimir Putin, Putin does not care about his countrymen. All he wants to do is just go in and win and create his legacy. He doesn't care if his soldiers die. That's their job for him. He does not care about that. Let's continue. Biden speculated Putin was not seeking, quote, any full blown war, but said he did believe he was looking for some type of confrontation. Quote, do I think he'll test the West, test the United States and NATO as significant as he can? Yes, I think he will. But I think he'll pay a serious and dear price for it. What? Sanctions? Sanctions? He'll fight a war. He'll do little skirmishes. He'll win a piece of the pie and he'll just rest and we'll put sanctions on him but he'll keep the land. We'll just do sanctions. Biden's prediction came after Ukrainian President um, Volodymyr Zelensky on Wednesday urged Ukrainians to not panic and to calm down over fears of possible Russian invasion. Quote, all our citizens, especially the elderly, need to understand this. Everyone needs to exhale. Calm down. Don't run for emergency supplies like buckwheat and matches. To all the media, remain as media not become a source of mass hysteria. Do not help the enemy in pursuit of hype by reporting daily that war may happen tomorrow. This will definitely not stop it. What is new here? Is this not the reality of the past eight years? Didn't the invasion begin in 2014? Did the threat of war emerge just now, he said? The only reason for panic is after the eight years, we are still influenced by the panic, he said. Zelensky said, Russia's aim is to weaken Ukraine in order to force Kiev to concede to Moscow and to create such a background that our no sounds weaker. The Ukrainian leader said Moscow is actively attacking your nerves, not our state, so that you have a constant feeling of panic. And that's the article. So I'm not going to lie, Zelensky sounds like much more of a leader than President Biden does on the brink of being invaded, knowing your military is overpowered and that the European powers are about to abandon you because the United States has already done it. That sucks, dude. I don't know what Zelensky's going to do. I don't envy the man. When, not if, when Russia invades and when they take a small chunk and there'll be no military action, I don't think Ukraine's going to fight for every every inch. They're going to be smart. Just like I said, there's a Russian-speaking contingency there. They're going to let that go. I guarantee they're going to let that go because they don't want bloodshed. They know if they engage the Russian military... It's going to go bad for them. Now, don't doubt the proxies aren't going to go in there and soften it up. And Biden already said, we're not getting into a war over proxies that we know are acting on behalf of Vladimir Putin. We're not getting into a war on that. We're not going to truly help them outside of sanctions. This this whole entire question and answer session, 
all it did today was let Ukraine know we do not have your back. And we're not unified. The European powers in NATO are not unified. We don't have the same intentions because the United States has allowed Russia to gain a lot of influence in Europe lately. So a lot of them don't want to screw up their economic chances with Russia that they'll pull back on them. So it told Ukraine, we don't have your back. And it told Putin, you have the green light. Go ahead. We're not going to do much. We have no want or need to go to war with you over Ukraine. Take it. That is what President Biden delivered in this speech today. And it's embarrassing. The man continues to embarrass the United States on all fronts. And anyone that continues to defend him is an idiot. Anyone that voted for him, I hope you have remorse. If you don't, there's a problem with you. Especially after speeches like this. He's been a nightmare domestically. He is a nightmare in foreign. Joe Biden's just a really bad president. And this speech, everything, not even just a speech, it doesn't solidify it. Everything he does solidifies his legacy as one of the worst presidents in the history of this country in under two years. Or just about two years. Well, no, yeah, a year. It's, it's just, I don't even know anymore. It pisses me off so much. We still have so much more time with this guy. And it's just, it's awful. The time goes slow. Time goes slow with him because he moves slow and he doesn't do anything. And when he does something, it's just, it just screws everything up more. Uh, all right. Before I get even more mad, all I got to say is uh, we know throughout history, appeasement does not work. Appeasement will never work for dictators that are seeking to grow their countries. It is obvious Vladimir Putin wants his legacy to be that he expanded Russia back to Soviet levels before he was done. He's trying to get all those Soviet satellites back. And Joe Biden is happy enough to let him do it. And I'm telling you, Macron, um, Boris Johnson, all these people, these leaders, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to do anything at all. So Ukraine, you're on your own. Good luck, Ukraine. Good luck. Your people, your president, good luck. Unfortunately, I really feel like you're all going to be Russian occupied very, very soon. And that's unfortunate. All right. So I appreciate everyone for listening to this episode. Um, I will be back again tomorrow. Socials, go search the Alex Cuesta show wherever you're on social media. We're there. We're having fun. We're throwing things out there. Um, once again, like, rate, share, spread the word, continue to do this more and more. And hopefully going to try and start to mix in a little more sports stuff too, because I like my sports and uh, just kind of whatever I want to mix in article wise. But there's so much egregious going on in the political world. And Joe Biden's such an idiot. He continues to give fodder. It's, it's very difficult not to continue to cover how stupid he is and how stupid the media is that continues to defend him and how they do it. So all right, everybody appreciate all you for listening. Have a good one. See you tomorrow.